Egghead Island is not what it seems. Have you noticed that five chapters into Egghead Island and we have still yet to be introduced to any other character outside of Vegapunk and his clones living on the island? These? These are all fake. You know why? Because no one else lives on this island but Vegapunk. And I have proof. So stay tuned until the end and please subscribe and like and do all that other good YouTube stuff. But first, an advanced ancient civilization housing robots? If you you've watched this video, then you know where this is going. The recent events of One Piece revealed another shocking twist which we can add to the rapidly growing list of insane reveals in the series and just gave a new meaning to the term flipping the world upside down. Egghead Island is not the island of the future but the island of the past and this completely flips our understanding of the entire series. Now these are just some of my initial thoughts I have running through my head because I actually wanted to discuss this even before the recent events played out but let me just combine all of these thoughts. Starting with Vegapunk, who is hailed to be the smartest mind in the series, but actually possessing the amount of knowledge that he does because everything that he's producing for the current timeline of the One Piece world is actually a product of knowledge he's somehow acquired from the ancient kingdom. This could mean that in the distant past, there is someone, or perhaps a collective of someones, who possess even greater knowledge than Vegapunk and was a part of the initial conception of whatever advanced technology they produced back back then. Vegapunk did himself say that Egghead Island is less advanced in comparison to the technology that the Ancient Kingdom had. And this could be the reason why those who have hatred for the current world order are so motivated with the idea of turning the world upside down. The term upside down may just mean digging up the knowledge that is currently buried deep within by those who fear it. And through this, the balance of power could be tilted. For example, and in particular, Dragon. After very recently finding out that Dragon and Vegapunk have some sort of seemingly amicable relationship and seeing as Vegapunk at least holds some knowledge about the ancient kingdom, can we assume that he's told Dragon the truth about the future past? Maybe this is what has spurred Dragon's motivation to start the revolutionary army. Also, maybe this could explain why the world government find it necessary to kill Vegapunk because he knows the truth about the ancient kingdom. I have to say I really like the dark turn that Oda is taking we always knew that the world government was concealing history, but the idea of them wiping out advanced technology and advanced knowledge, it feels that much more sinister and totalitarian. Almost like the world government is keeping the world in the dark ages. The first glimpse at this ancient kingdom with the reveal of the robots is awfully familiar. For those of you who are regular viewers of this channel, you may have come across this video I made a few months ago about how I think I've discovered the end of One Piece through analysis of a Studio Ghibli film that seems to have helped heavily inspired Echiro Oda's work. And if you haven't seen it, then please check out the link below. But what I would like to point out is to a specific part of that video. An incredibly advanced ancient civilization that existed containing structures very similar to what we see in One Piece. And now, as of very recently, another one of these similarities have emerged. Ancient robots. So I think it's definitely undeniable that Castle in the Sky heavily inspired One Piece. But back to what sort of implications the reveal of an advanced ancient kingdom has for the future of the series' events, well, where do we even begin? Is Egghead Island itself a part of the once known ancient kingdom, or did Vegapunk or someone else simply transfer or recreate the technology that we can currently see on the island, or simply a replica or homage to it? Was Vegapunk also alive during the ancient kingdom? Which is an idea that I have discussed recently, especially when we consider Bonnie's Devil Fruit ability to manipulate ages, but what knowledge does does Vegapunk have about the Void Century? One of, if not the most important piece of the puzzle to solve the true history of the series. Is it solely about the technology or does he hold more lore-filled info? Could it be that the One Piece itself is found within the Ancient Kingdom which is currently nowhere to be found because it is actually Laugh Tale? Perhaps the process of connecting all four world poneglyphs will lead to the secret location of the Ancient Kingdom and this is why the world government is so afraid of pirates finding the One Piece because doing so will also lead them to the location of the Ancient Kingdom which houses a crazy amount of advanced technology that will give whoever finds it an insane amount of power. And can we also start questioning Devil Fruits themselves? We know that Vegapunk has experimented on and has created artificial Devil Fruits but what if this is also something that he has been trying to replicate of the Ancient Kingdom? This could tie in with genetic modification both being one and the same.
name. Perhaps the ancient kingdom was so powerful and had all the power in the world, which is what we now see in the form of devil fruits. So to salvage these powers at the turn of the Great War, they transformed their powers into the devil fruit so that if consumed, will unlock the hidden super weapon for the next user. The idea of a highly advanced kingdom can make any and all speculations and wildly imaginative scenarios possible. There really is no limit right now to what could be revealed next. Seriously, drop your wildest theories in the comment section below because at least just one of them is bound to come true. But the robots. I want to focus on these ancient robots because the one that was revealed to us is a relic of the past. But the question now is are these now completely unusable or is there someone that could potentially revive these robots? It could be the reason that Vegapunk wants to create a sun because that is the key to powering up these dormant robots or are we possibly searching for another transcendent creature that may be able to revive and control these weapons thus making that individual an ancient weapon similar to Shirohoshi due to her ability to command the Sea Kings. It was also said that the entirety of Egghead Island is powered by fire but also that Vegapunk is in search of an alternative method for this and obviously at the mention of this Luffy's recently achieved Sun God Nika form comes to mind as one of the things that could play a major role in this arc. But also Sabo comes to mind and may prove to be crucial judging by this eternal flame remark. Honestly, Egghead Island is showing us the results of the series' most ridiculous ideas all put together. But personally, what I find most strange about this arc is that a few chapters in and we have still yet to meet characters outside of Vegapunk and his other bodies. Seriously, have you noticed that outside of the Straw Hats, Bonnie, Caribou, as in all characters who have only recently entered the island and Vegapunk, there are no other obvious arc characters. And usually arc characters are what helps us become invested into the arc. In all previous arcs we've had, Vivi and the residents of Arabasta, Gunfall and Wipa in Skypea, Iceberg and the others in Water 7, Rebecca amongst everyone else in Dressrosa, and the Scabbards, Momonosuke, Odin and Tama in the recent Wano arc. But so far on Egghead Island, the only arc characters that have been introduced are the Vegapunks. Could it be that this island really has no other living being outside of Vegapunk and all the other creatures we've seen are just the product of Vegapunk's genius? And that in and of itself may not seem so strange. If this is to be a short arc just to give us some info dumps and set the stage for future arcs, maybe Vegapunk and Bonnie really are all the emotional pull that we need. But an idea that I've been considering for some time now is that there is something afoot on Egghead Island. Or better yet, Egghead Island is not what it's all cracked up to be. And even the creatures we've seen so far may not have always existed before we got to the island, but instead are the result of some other wacky algorithmic procedure that Vegapunk has going on. Take this panel for example, which is what first intrigued me and led me down this rabbit hole. When Luffy, Chopper, Jinbei and Bonnie changed their outfits shortly after they finished eating, moments later it was shown that the Recycoli was munching on the crew and Bonnie's food waste. And soon afterwards, some random inhabitants of the island suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Even Jinbei pointed out that there was no one there before, but suddenly the town was full of people. And my idea is that these aren't actually people, but instead, they were produced by the island using the crew and Bonnie's DNA, or lineage factor rather. I know it sounds crazy, but it could be a possibility that this island continuously creates clones using the genetic fiber that it gathers. I mean, it is an arc where Vegapunk has created six other bodies of himself after all, and Seraphims are literally giant clones of the former warlords, so it really isn't all too far-fetched. When the Seraphim reveal first dropped, the question was whether all warlords signed an agreement to be experimented upon or handed over a sample of their DNA to the world government. But maybe what really happened is that they never even knew this development using their lineage factor was being conducted. If I remember correctly, the first time the warlords were together, they were on a table eating. Seriously, it's pretty hard to imagine that characters like Mihawk would simply hand over his lineage factor even if it was for the Shichibukai title. So what might have happened instead is the Recycoli, after recycling the food rubbish, gathered the genetic prints of the consumer and spat out these clones. And why do I think this? Outside of this arc being full of clones and Jinbei pointing out that these people came out of nowhere, I want you to look 
closely two said individuals who appeared out of nowhere. Three little ones who are the same size as Chopper, a woman in front of them who could honestly be mistaken for Bonnie from behind, and someone who is a lot more covered with a hoodie on his back in a similar position to where Luffy's straw hat is after his outfit changed. This is followed by another small panel with another seemingly feminine figure, a smaller creature, someone with a helmet who I assume is male due to the fact a similar outfit is worn by Luffy, and also this arc makes a point to dress its female characters with as little bottom covering as possible, and a taller, seemingly rounder individual who could be Jinbei's clone. This is also the very same panel where Jinbei made his observation, and all the other random characters we see after this fits the build of Luffy and the others, whereas around Sanji and the other characters who haven't eaten anything yet, meaning that they haven't made gatherable genetic footprint, no one shows up in front of them, no seeming citizens. And so this could be the reason why these individuals suddenly appeared randomly in front of Luffy's group with their faces obviously hidden. Seriously, not one of their faces were seen, not one of them were introduced, in fact none of them spoke or even acknowledged the presence of Luffy and his group. Because I think that all of these creatures are simply clones and aren't capable of human interaction. They're simply a product of this island created using Luffy and the others genetic footprint and the purpose behind doing all of this is the cause for even more overthinking. But perhaps as I said, maybe Vegapunk just loves to do more and more research on playing with the genetic modification of his subjects which was seen through the recent events in relation to Jinbei Seraphim and all the extensive testing that the Vegapunks wanted to do. So what Vegapunk is doing is just continuously making hosts of those who step foot on the island. Because imagine all the powers he could then have access to. This could be how the Jinbei Seraphim has what seemed to be the swim swim powers. If Doflamingo visited Vegapunk's island with his crew, maybe Vegapunk was able to gain the lineage factor of Senor Pink. Wild idea, I know. But this is something that I've been toying with for a while now. And the recent events really pushed it to the forefront. But with this and the recent developments, we can safely say that nothing in One Piece will ever be the same again. So make sure to let me know your wildest ideas by leaving a comment below. Please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joyfleet Discord server or even become a Patreon or channel member. And I do want to thank all our executive officers for their continued support. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.